What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. Today I present to you the Master Guide to Bartering in Seven Days to Die. A deep dive into all the complex mechanics behind bartering, traitors, and the better barter perks. This video is broken down into four parts. Check the timestamps in the description if you want to jump around or refer back later. Let's begin. Part 1. Trader Inventory Analysis The first thing we need to cover is the selection of items that all traders will carry, because the trader's stock is a lot less random than you think. Let's go over the numbers and I'll explain as we go. All traders carry a set inventory of 30 to 70 items with a minimum and maximum quantity that will be selected by chance among several categories. Let's look at the basic stock, and then we'll see the secret stash next. 4 to 8 general items. These are various items like food, ammo, books, construction supplies, all types of tools, all types of medicine, or workstations. 9 to 14 general resources, anything from wood to iron to acid and lockpicks. 2 to 8 construction supplies, cobble, concrete, nails, landmines? 2 to 7 decorative blocks, like curtains, mattresses, faucets, etc. 1 to 2 tools, such as iron tools like the fire axe, shovel, pickaxe, the iron sledgehammer, the wrench, hammer, repair kits, anvil, bellows, forged iron or steel, the paintbrush or wire tool. 1 low to mid tier melee weapon, such as the hunting knife, baseball bat, iron spear, iron sledge, iron knucks, or stun baton. 1 low tier gun, this would be the pistol, double barrel shotgun, AK-47, hunting rifle, wood bow, iron crossbow, or junk sledge. 1 gun part. 1 to 4 items of clothing, 1 to 2 mixed light armor, and what mixed means in this case is that there is a probability of any tier armor, padded and leather being more common than military. 1 to 2 mixed heavy armor, same thing, only scrap and iron armor being more common than steel. 1 to 2 electrical items like electrical parts, the generator, battery bank, blade trap, trip wires, electric fences, pressure plates, darts, light bulbs, dart traps, relays, motion sensors, speakers, and switches. 1 to 2 mods, and mods are divided into 3 tiers, low, mid, and high, with lower tier being more likely than higher tier. Now for the secret stash, in which all traders carry one tool, one to two mixed guns. This means some chance of a mid-tier gun like a pump shotgun, tactical assault rifle, marksman rifle, 44 magnum, compound bow or crossbow, or junk turret, but higher chance for low-tier gun, and even a small chance for this to just be gun parts. One guaranteed gun part, one to two piles of ammo, bullets, rockets, bolts, and arrows included, one mixed light armor, one mixed heavy armor, one to two books or common schematics, one book or rare schematic, one guaranteed perk book, one low tier melee mod, this could be the serrated blade, structural brace, weighted head, grave digger, wood splitter, or the small gas tank. One to two additional mods, one low tier vehicle part, this could be the wheel, engine, bike, mini bike, motorcycle, or any chassis or handlebar therein, and traders will always stock one forget an elixir in the secret stash. Note, the quality of the trader's items is generally between 1 and 4 for low and mid tier items, and between 1 and 3 for high tier items, and this is important. Your game stage, level, or days alive have no influence on what is stocked by a trader. A day one inventory has an equal probability to contain the same items that are found on day 100. Part 2. Trader Specialties Now that we understand the basic trader inventory and we understand a bit about categories and the potential items within them, we can dive into trader specialties. Every trader has a unique specialization that you need to know about. Their specialty only affects the regular inventory items, not the secret stash, and it does not scale up or improve with points into better barter. Each trader's specialization is as follows. Trader Wrecked. Make it snappy, I gotta take a crap. Probably the most hated of the quintet of traders, his specialty will do little to win you over to his cause. This trader specializes in carrying extra food and seeds for your garden. In addition to the basic trader item loadout, Wrecked carries an extra 1-2 to two seeds and 3-6 to six extra cans of food. At least that's what the game files say he's supposed to do, but in reality he doesn't actually carry seeds and oftentimes doesn't have canned food either. Trader Wrecked truly is a son of a bitch after all. Now beat it, fucker! Get out of my store! Next up, Trader Hugh. 
quit wasting my time. Professional mountain man Trader Hugh, complete with cliche facial scar, compensates for his questionable looks by specializing in weapons and ammo. Beyond what the other traders will carry, Hugh will stock an extra two to four low to mid-tier melee weapons, two low-tier guns, and one to two mid-tier guns at any given time. You still hanging around? Then there's Trader Joel. Based on fun pimp Joel, aka Mad Mole, Trader Joel is a true friend in the wasteland. Come speak with me, friend. To protect his warm heart, Joel specializes in clothing and armor. He will stock an extra one to three pieces of mixed heavy and light armor each. It's been a real pleasure. And Trader Bob. Hi. Probably the dirtiest man in all Navas game, Bob is a true grease monkey. He specializes in tools and vehicle parts, allowing him to carry a guaranteed two extra vehicle parts or the vehicles themselves, including the 4x4 and gyrocopter. No other trader will ever stock the 4x4 or gyrocopter or their components in their regular inventory. <laughs> Last off, we have the fan favorite, Trader Jen. Reportedly a doctor. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Jen tries to live up to her title by stocking, quote, the best selection of medicine in the wasteland. She guarantees an extra two rare medical items and two to five common medical items. Unfortunately, her, quote, best selection of, quote, medicine includes fort bites, blood bags, cloth bandages, awesome sauce, and several other items that you wouldn't necessarily go to the doctor for. I'm starting to think you like Dr. Jen. Part 3. The Better Barter Perks Better Barter has five levels, plus 5% bartering with each, and additionally, quote, secret stash shows better loot, end quote, with levels 3, 4, and 5. That's pretty ambiguous, so let's dig in deeper. Let's first look at Better Barter Level 3 to get a general sense of what better means, and then I'll briefly cover the differences between levels 3, 4, and 5. Better Barter Level 3. The following are new items added to the old secret stash with Better Barter Level 3. 2-3 to three electrical items, 1 rare tool, 1-2 to two mixed vehicle parts, which is a chance for any vehicle part, less so for the 4x4 and gyrocopter though, a chance for any melee weapon, low tier being more common than higher tier, 1-2 to two, quote stash only items low, end quote, which consists of auto turrets. The following are old items, but their quantity is increased. More ammo, an extra couple bits of mixed heavy and light armor, extra common schematics or books, extra rare schematics or books, and extra perk books guaranteed, and better mods, or at least a better chance for higher tier mods. Better Barter Level 4. The following are added with Better Barter Level 4. 1 to 2 steel or SWAT armor, 1 to 2 military armor or night vision goggles, 1 guaranteed mining helmet with a light, 2-3, to three, quote, stash-only items high, which consists of auto turrets, solar cells, or the crucible, and 1-2 to two high-tier guns like the SMG, M60, 44 Magnum, Desert Vulture, Auto Shotgun, Sniper Rifle, or Rocket Launcher, and note that the quality will be between 1 and 3. And the following are increased in quantity. The number of tools, weapons, ammo, books, schematics, and vehicle parts all will increase and there is a better chance to get higher tier mods. Better Barter Level 5 The following are added with Better Barter Level 5. One night vision goggle, one solar bank, one to three solar cells, one mid-tier gun, and one to two high-tier guns still, but now the quality is up to five. Note. Traders will never stock quality 5 items, aside from football and mining helmets, unless you have Better Barter Level 5, and in that case, it will only apply to these high tier guns in the secret stash. The following are increased. The number of electrical parts, tools, ammo, bits of armor, books, schematics, vehicle parts, stash only items, and you get the best chance for high tier mods. Part 4. Mastering the Art of the Deal Now we have a solid understanding of how the trading system works and just how powerful points into better barter can be. So how can we maximize our profits? Number 1. Put any unused mods onto your gear before you sell it to increase the value. 
mods increase the value of an item at a fixed rate based entirely upon the quality of that item. On a quality one item, you get 22 dukes per mod, not worth it since most mods themselves carry an average value of 40 to 60 dukes, give or take depending on the mod. Quality 2 gives you 115 dukes per mod, quality 3 206 dukes per mod, quality 4 298 dukes, quality 5 389, and quality 6 items will yield 480 additional dukes per mod. That's right, do the math. Note, these increases are without any increases to your bartering skill, be it from Sugar Butts, Awesome Sauce, the Cigar, or the Better Barter Perks. Every percentage increase in your bartering skill is a percentage increase to the value added by mods. Item tier does not influence additional value per mod, only quality. Therefore, it's best to apply your mods to the highest quality items, not the highest tier items. For example, you should put a mod onto quality 6 padded gloves and not quality 1 steel gloves, or even quality 5 steel gloves for that matter. It's easy to bulk craft simple mods such as the semi trigger group or the weighted head, and it can really pay off when applied to your sellable gear. It doesn't matter which mod you put onto an item, every mod increases item value by the same amount. Number two, sell in bulk and use a Sugar Butts candy, bartering plus 10%, or Grandpa's Awesome Sauce, bartering plus 20% when you do. And finally, you can wear a cigar to gain a further 10% in bartering. Stock up on honey and mushrooms to craft the awesome sauce and buy it whenever you see it. The potential benefit far exceeds the cost. Additionally, you can cook and consume a pumpkin cheesecake for an extra 5% bartering when buying only. The best way i found to grind some quick cash on day one is to mine iron, craft it into robotic turret ammo, and sell it to the trader. With no point allocation and a quality one stone axe, you can net about 250 dukes per hour. With one point in Minor 69er, Mother Load, Sexual Tyrannosaurus, and Better Barter, and with a quality two stone axe, you can double that up to around 500 dukes per hour. This is a great strategy if you have a chance to buy a decent firearm on day one, and your game stage is so low that loot mostly contains Stone Age equipment that traders won't buy. If you're a fan of cheese, you can game the system a little bit by using a clever trick to double the items available in a secret stash. All you have to do is take four points into intellect, wear a pair of nerdy glasses, then take three points into better barter, thereby unlocking the better secret stash. While at a trader, you can go through their stash before removing the nerdy glasses, therefore decreasing your intellect by one and deactivating Better Barter level three, and therefore reverting the secret stash back to its default setting and opening up a completely new stock. Note, this trick works at Better Barter level four and five as well, so you can do it each time as you level your way up. Conclusion. Some things can never be purchased at the trader and must be found in loot, such as most quality 5 items and all quality 6 items. Other things can never be found in loot and must be purchased, like solar panels, solar cells, and SMG auto turrets, for example. It takes 21 skill points to get max better barter and 13 skill points to get max lucky looter. Lucky looter only gives you a percentage increase in game stage you still need to achieve a relatively high level or days alive to access better gear. But that's a topic for another video that I'll link right here for you to watch later. So Better Barter is certainly no replacement for looting, but I would argue that it can be a more effective means of obtaining the things you need. But I leave that up to you to decide for yourself. It was my pleasure to put this video together for you today, and I hope that you learned something new. I'll be back again soon for another technical analysis in 7 Days to Die, and I hope that you'll join me again. But until then, I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.